You want to play 21? I got 22. You want to play blackjack? I got two of those too. You want to play aces and eights? Maybe I got too many of those too. Do you want to play 21? Well, I got 22. Court is in session. Verdict is in. No appeal on the docket today. Just my own sin. <laughs> Hello and welcome to OSW 100. This is your boy with arms wide open. It's Jay Hunter. John is ever with the faceless man. Crusty Weathered. And wet. <laughs> <laughs> Our boy V1. What's the crack, lads? And the bread of shame. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. OC. <laughs> it's OSW 100 Heroes of Wrestling. And it's coming up right now. Welcome, doggers. Oh, me now 100. Holy shit. I've been here from the start, Jay. You've been here from the yeah, start, yeah. Jay. And that, that's all. That is all. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big blow in. <laughs> <laughs> big dirty blow in, lads. Your voice sounded way different than episode one. There, I think we all did. You sounded like a young lesbian. <laughs> Named Neo. <laughs> that was my favorite comment on OSW1 there. How are you doing, mate? Great. It's amazing to make it to 100 episodes. That's 10 years of OSW. 100 episodes. Still going strong. Aww. What's your earliest memory of OSW, Steve? Episode 2. <laughs> Were you at episode? You were at episode two, right? I you? was, I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, see, he's the Hobbit, man. Did uh, everyone's loving that? What do you think? I loved it. Enjoyed preparing for the, the podcast, enjoyed the podcast itself, and loved the review. But just a PSA. I know you like these PSAs. Oh, yeah. That tattoo is not me. That is not, that person <laughs> is not me. You don't have let's a just, that. Let's just clarify <laughs> right <laughs> now yeah. that that is not me. Like, even if. Are you going to prove it with uh, picture proof, though? No. Okay. Look, it's like and leave what, isn't what you will. <laughs> <laughs> that OSW 100 intro. Thanks to Kevin Ing Ingai N N G U Y. Noyan. 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 There's no E N there. It's not Peter again. No, is no. It? This is Kevin Noy. Ah, he's so Noy. <laughs> 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 Have you seen Heroes of Wrestling before? Never. Oh wow. Well. P1. 
I've seen clips, but I'd never seen the entire show. Oh, wow, me too. I've only seen Jake, and that was, whatever, 12 years ago yeah. or something. So I've never seen the pay-per-view either. That's amazing that three lifelong fans who have a wrestling podcast have never gotten around to this. It's like, if I'm putting myself through that, it's for his show. Y- yes. <laughs> One last thing. Mr. OC, another day, another dollar, another dollar, another OSW yeah. tattoo. Yeah. Ooh, what's Spencer Westcott gotten on his leg? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. We've got the letters OSW. There is no denying it's an OSW tattoo. Excellent. Jay is like the Brett character. Steve is the Million Dollar Man character. And I'm the Ultimate Warrior character. I mean, that is effort. That's design. Beautifully done. It looks exactly like the animated segment by McCodum. Brilliant. Whopper. Love it. Absolutely brilliant. This is everything that we ever wanted. <laughs> and I'll never yeah. get that for her. <laughs> <laughs> I know you love it. Factor. <laughs> uh, yeah, fucking brilliant. Absolutely love it, mate. A winner is you. Ooh, let's find out who his boy crushes are. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, the warlord. Oh, what a boy. A big boy. Beefy boy. Big, baldy, beefy, boy. Baldy. <laughs> Big, beautiful, baldy, beefy boy that you'd love to stick in your boy's name. I'll tell you what, we gave him big, big love back in the original Pokemania arc, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. He's got nearly everything to be the mm. best. Well, he can't talk, Just, but so what? He can wrestle. But he can wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got the rest of it. <laughs> Uh, next up, the Shango Tango, Papa Shango. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, whenever he missed his cue there at WrestleMania yep. eight, that was it. He's just like he he ran from the gorilla position right into that boy stable. <laughs> Fucking beautiful. <laughs> He's never getting out. A classic boy. I mean, he is a definite boy, no question. But to me, if he gets any more loved, he's gonna fall out the door. Next up, the Spooter Man, Johnny B. Bad. Oh yeah. wow! I more of a boy would have been Mark Mero, but. Will you have, think will so? Accept definitely more of a boy. Definitely. What do you think? I'm. Oh, he like he was embarrassed in in WWF. Like he was just constantly overshadowed by Sable, and then he teamed with Goldust, and then sawed it off. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. He had a great song though. Uh, not the. <laughs> 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 one after that. You have to go through a shit theme before you get a good one. Next up, lads. Gangers. Yeah. Gangrel. One of the best teams ever. Oh, yeah. Holy. Without great, yeah, what a banger. Great uh, banger for a ganger. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I mean, entrance was great. Look was cool. Came at the perfect time. I love how he made a big poofy shirt work. Because mm. like prior to the 90s, you had those like romance novels from the early <laughs> 90s. With Fabio, yeah, his open yeah, shirt. Yeah. Or Seinfeld when he had the poofy pirate shirt. You know? <laughs> But he made it work. <laughs> Fucking Fabio. Didn't he cut a terrible promo and that killed his push? He cut a promo? What's his voice like? It's kind of generic. Everything just very generic. Like, you would hope he's going to come out with something, you know, a little bit off the wall, but it's just very, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. You know, that kind like, of... Like, did he... Did he uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> 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 that promo death, by the way. <laughs> There's only one wrestler in the history of the world who should be able to mm-hmm. say that. Yeah. When our bloodlines first embraced, I knew you were so special. That's- and lastly, but not leastly, his bottom boy, Ooh. Adam Bomb, baby. Adam yeah. Bomb, wow, yes, super boy. Yeah, great look. Amazing look. I, 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 I think he, they could have done more with him. And an amazing cameo in the Mortal Kombat Conquest TV show. Mm. Wow, what did he do? He was just some like, ah, I'm like a pirate baddie. I'm going to be the like random fight in like episode four. Gets battered, but looks great. Mm. All right. Leave her alone. You're going to make me? Yes. You haven't stopped anything yet. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah! Yeah. 
That's it. So here is a stable in full, lads. Uh, Warlord, Papa Shango, Johnny B. Bad, Gangers, and Adam Bomb Baby. That's a god solid oh. fucking boy, yeah. boy stable. Yeah. Like, there's not one that I would be like. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So excellent well, job, Spence. Ah, thank you so much. That is a wonderful tattoo. I love that artwork as well. It's great. Uh, Adam Anime and the code and stuff. It's awesome. I love that I'm Brett. I'm so happy with that. <laughs> with a little waistcoat as well. <laughs> you got a teeny waistcoat. You see. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And he just signs off here saying, uh, keep up the good work, take care, be safe, and much love to all three of you, Spencer. Aww. The winner is you. Right back at you, buddy. Good stuff. Sorry, but OOC is my favorite bra. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with all that hot dogging out of the way, let's get you up to speed. Heroes of Wrestling Retrospective 1999, literally the peak of wrestling with WWF and WCW on fire just before WCW would implode in 2000. To put it in perspective, average combined Raw and Dynamite viewership in 2020 was 2.7 million. In 1999, on average, how many people watched Raw and Nitro? 11.2. Oh. Holy fuck! That's just in the States as well. What was going on in the world of wrestling around this pay-per-view? So the pay-per-view was October 10th. So October 2nd, ECW Hardcore TV. Who the super crazy job to? It's only... Jerry Lynn. October 4th, WCW Nitro. There was a match in memory for Owen Hart, who had passed away in May that year. So Brett beat TV champion Chris Benoit with a sharpshooter in a half-hour bout. Nice. October 5th, Smackdown tapings. Darren Drozdoff, he suffered his career-ending injury at the hands of D'Lo Brown. Fuck, damn it, D'Lo. Yeah, yeah, which would kind of kill his career as well. Yeah. Like after that, his push was gone. I remember I listened to an episode of BTR years ago, and D'Lo used to say that he used to, like, roll up like a ball of tape, and he put it in his socks, and the day that that accident happened was the one day that he didn't roll up the little ball of tape. He always says that that kind of plays on his mind as well. Why? What would the tape do? It was just like a little good luck charm that he used to do before every match. Wouldn't that impede your ability to walk, though? I mean, it's not like a massive ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like a little mm. ball of tape. Probably won't be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Jerry Lawler ran for mayor of Tennessee. He'd finish a distant third with a little over 11%. Not bad. Yeah. And we'll finish on a high here to see Rock and Sock main event October 11th Raw the next night filled out 33,375 at the Georgia Dome. I'll tell you what, thing. Ooh, wrestling at its biggest, wrestling at its worst <laughs> <laughs> in the same week. <laughs> So yeah, wrestling was extremely hot, and promoter Bill Stone of Fostone Productions wanted in. Based in Virginia, he'd run combat sports like kickboxing and college sporting events. Uh, he saw an opportunity to present a nostalgia-based pay-per-view wrestling event and brought it to in-demand pay-per-view company. Let's plan for a four-year and possibly tour if it goes well. Stone plonked down 300 grand to make this event happen. That's a, he's a bigger mark than Russellicious fella. <laughs> <laughs> to break even, he just needed 40,000 buys. It made 29. Oh. The show went so badly that other events were immediately cancelled and he left the wrestling business forever. Was it really that bad? How did it all go down? Let's find out. V1, you got a half hour pre-show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not a Mountain Dew, KFC, Gold Honey Mustard, Barbecue, Gotta Be, Gotta Be Domino's pre-show. We need something that'll give you the shits. <laughs> 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 so it's your Sour Milk, Taco Bell, Cheesy Gordita, Crunch Supreme pre-show. Nice. Yeah. This was weird. So uh, nearly 30 years ago, the Gulf Coast was absolutely destroyed by Hurricane Camille and its awesome power. Well, tonight, a fury almost as big is going to hit the casino magic. I'm like, dude, that's, that's not something to be bragging about. Like, <laughs> that's, that's very uncool. It's, it's, it's yeah. like, yeah. That's, mm. And you don't want to liken your show to a disaster as well. <laughs> <laughs> the foreshadowing was yeah. very real here. 
Hello, everybody. I'm Randy Rosenblum, alongside wrestling icon, Dutch Mantel. That's me. So we're finally introduced to our commentary duo, Randy Rosenblum and Dirty Dutch Mantel, where Dirty Dutch promises us on this show tonight, it's going to be all legends. There's not going to be any no names. There's not going to be any new kids on the block. I was like, um, I think both of those are lies. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes on to talk about the wrestlers on the card. And he uses terms like age old, legendary, a long time ago. <laughs> he uses terms like these over and over again. You know, I'm not thinking of like legends of wrestling. I'm just thinking of old farts. <laughs> 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 this is your 30 minute ad which you're meant to sell the product what I quite enjoyed was that every single match other than the main event was a grudge match oh man <laughs> I love it <laughs> there are 8 grudge matches from on the, the card. 80s <laughs> a tag team grudge match beauty and the beast grudge match special grudge match tag team grudge match express versus horseman grudge match no mercy grudge match ultimate grudge match and yet another special grudge match. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that special then, can it? They ran out of grudge match types. <laughs> <laughs> like, what What grudge does anyone have with Tommy Rogers or Julio Fantastico? <laughs> Come on. Oh, he parked in his face, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Captain Lou cuts one of his Captain Lou promos. He speaks at a million miles per hour. Snook is going to whoop you. He's going to hurt you. He's going to maim you. He's going to cripple you. But I will say that I actually kind of liked him. I thought he was kind of fun. I do like Captain Lou's promo cadence. He's like, you're a liar. You're a cheat. You're a sneak. I'm Captain Lou. <laughs> 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 He's uh, actually, like waiting, said it best. He's like one of those machines. You put a coin in him and he just goes off in a 30 second promo. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, <laughs> Orton says that he can beat Snooker. He can beat him at anything. He can beat him at swimming. He can beat him at pool. He can beat him at poker. He can beat him at wrestling. Those would have been way better vignettes <laughs> than the match. I'd love to see that. It would be fucking great. Swimming. Brilliant. Bundy cuts a promo. He calls Yokozuna Porkazuna. That's, That's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought yeah. it was awesome. Yoko cuts a very rare promo in English, which was bizarre to hear. What is what is he like? Like a gangster, you know? A like, jive. Yeah, yeah, like a jive. Sucker. Like a jive turkey. <laughs> <laughs> he claims that he's the biggest man. Can you say it in his voice? I'm the biggest man. <laughs> no, I, no, I can't. And he says I'm that. the biggest man. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> so, so terrible. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm the one that got all the gold. You heard me? So if you want some, come on down to my land. Heroes of Wrestling. Banzai! Jake Roberts versus Jim the Anvil Nightheart build. Jake cuts a quick promo all about gambling. It's pretty fucking good, lads. Uh, Is this different from his one later? Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Uh, he's clearly not off of his tits yeah. yet. He's sharp and he's on his game. Anvil, if you want to come here and gamble at the tables or at the cards, go ahead. But you don't want to gamble on me, mate. I was like, that's fucking great. Excellent job. Enjoy the gamble, if you will. Just make sure it's the casino, not in the ring with me. One Man Gang cuts a very fat, sweaty 80s <laughs> promo. <laughs> no mercy is going to be given. He's going to be a victim. Just generic Fat man promo. I, t I tell you what, he looks... That's the best he's ever looked. He looks like a hundred bucks. <laughs> Slim and trim. Beauty and the beast. Now, here's the beautiful part. Greg the Hammer Valentine. Now, the Hammer is, without a doubt, in my opinion, the most beautiful technical wrestler to ever enter the squared circle. Dirty Dutch calls Valentine the most beautiful wrestler to ever step foot in the ring. He didn't laugh, lads. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing... We get a quick build to uh, Scorpio Sky versus Julio Fantastico. Uh, too, too cold, Scorpio. What do they call him? Scorpio Sky. Oh shit! Okay, that's a that's a different. That would have been he would have been six or something. <laughs> <laughs> we get 
a <laughs> quick build-up of Too Cold, Scorpio, and Julio Fantastico. Scorpio has grown out his hair. He's got some kind of um, ringlet thing going on. He looks yeah. ridiculous. A bit of, bit of Rick James. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or mm-hmm. a modern twist, Deli Alley. Oh. Mm. He's, he's done a bit of that. Millie Vanilli. Mm. Yeah. One of them. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Millie <laughs> or Vanilli. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Rosenblum, you're too much, man. I tell you, we get started off on a bad foot. Just just call the action. Let we'll me get fine. back to okay, this. Okay, go, go. We'll go, see go. what happens. The lads come back and have one final rundown off the card. Commentary teams start, like, bickering back and forth. It's really awkward. Like, it was a very bad way to kind of sell this show as your final push. And then they throw to an intro which is meant to be the intro of the show, but they must get the time wrong because then they come back to the lads and the oh. ra- ringside, do one last final push, and then they fade to black, but they don't turn off the mics and you hear some people like chattering in the background, like telling them, oh, camera six, blah, 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 do this, do that. And I was like, the show hasn't even started. <laughs> <laughs> and it's already a fucking disaster. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Steve. Very good, sir. Very good. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just in general, on pre-show, has there ever been a pre-show that would make you think if you were there at that time, you would want to buy the pay-per-view? Todd made some of them fun, but I don't think I've ever watched a pre-show that has sold me. Yeah. I would generally know if I was going to order something before the pre-show ever aired. Here's be my idea for a pre-show. Let's we'll say WrestleMania 33. Remember, the Hardys returned. Yeah. Why not end your pre-show with the Hardys music hitting? Oh, oh fucking Cut hell. it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. really clever. It's Canadian Thanksgiving, October 10th, 1999, live from the Casino Magic Entertainment and Golf Resort in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, with 2,300 in attendance, heavily papered. How many poor souls paid for this event? 29,000, shelling out $19.95. Commentators tonight are Randy Rosenblum and Dirty Dutch Mantel in a smelly poncho. <laughs> he did look smelly. Swarthy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Rosenblum was a last minute replacement for Gordon Soli who had health issues actually had health issues at least the last kind of decade he would have been dodgy to commentate a decade ago so it's no surprise dodge the bullet why Rosenblum? he was a mate of producer Bill Stone he's a sportscaster mostly football thought to be a safe bet for TV in ring is announcer Crisper Stanford the legit ENTS manager for the casino oh wow <laughs> So throw down your toys and get out of the sandbox. Playtime's over because tonight someone's gonna get their ass whooped tonight. <laughs> That's not a typo. He said tonight twice. Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, dude. Oh, is this like the uh, welcome to the motorsport sports sport? sport. <laughs> Things go fast, fast, fast. Don't let go of me. <laughs> Where are you throwing me? <laughs> because tonight somebody's gonna get their ass. Whoop tonight in here. I thought he was okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> the first sentence, he was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of grading on a curve here. We've like, and you know, yeah, I'm a bit fading. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the level that I'm looking at, and I thought he was like there or thereabouts. <laughs> Our inaugural contest is a tag team grudge match. Samoan SWAT team Tama and Samu versus Party Marty with fantastic Kami what? Tommy Rogers. Tommy? <laughs> so it's combined 70 years versus a combined 77 years. Avec rally towel, shirt, tie, suspenders and slacks. Is this guy a wrestler? Who? <laughs> <laughs> he looks like a businessman. <laughs> That's not Tommy Rogers. It's Paul Adams who cuts an endless heel promo and kills the crowd. Oh. Go to Biloxi, Mississippi for the heroes of wrestling and find two big heroes. So It's weird because they showed a graphic of Marty and Tommy and then the heel guy comes out. So yeah. 
a lot of production errors like oh. across the board. I, did you like Marty's graphic? It was like Sean's legs were in it. <laughs> 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 That's Marty right there. <laughs> it, with Sean wrapped around him. That's it. No entrance Samoan SWAT team. Uh, by the way, Dutch keeps calling Tama Fatu tonight, which is technically correct. The best kind of correct. Uh, he's Sam Fatu which is different to Rikishi Fatu, who was booming in the WWF with Too Cool. Just a few months off their peak with the dance spot, the Royal Rumble 2000. Yeah. But they didn't, they called they him called Fatu. They called Fatu, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cheeky, lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marty is 39 here. I thought he was in great shape. I thought he looked great. I get the impression that he forgot his gear. Yeah, he's wrestling in black shorts. So. Yeah, and a belt. <laughs> Come yep. on, mate. Think of this way, he's in great shape, yes, but... We're nearly 39. And we're in terrible shape. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not our like, job to be. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. But if it was our job, we would be in great shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd be road dogging it probably. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, the first lockup and then the in ring ad is kicked. There is a physical Toblerone, massive Toblerone, which is an ad for the casino in a part of the ring on the apron. You can't physically take up part of the ring with an ad. <laughs> you have a sticker on the mat. Okay, yeah. like a Snickers, you know. It's a big boxing gimmick as well because boxing guys aren't bumping and they're not, you know, running the ropes. So you can put ads fucking everywhere in a boxing ring. Yeah. But on a, re- like, not that they were that active during the show. <laughs> <laughs> but still, you know. Oh, the time wasting is insane. Fain wanting to leave. Marty waves the crowd trying to rally support. Heels Panto asks for a handshake. <laughs> it's 1978 <laughs> fucking Salt Hill House show here. Uh, well, where's Joey? Joey Legend should have been on that show. Everyone could have turned their backs to him. Dutch says, just because they're not in WCW or WWF doesn't mean they don't have fans and shouldn't be here. And <laughs> They have a right to exist. <laughs> <laughs> Saying things like that is just hammering at home that, oh yeah, they're not in the big companies. <laughs> you don't have a right to be here. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. Uh, but, and he tags in his partner. Here comes fantastic Tommy Rogers. Uh, look at there. I was very nervous watching this match because Marty did everything. He came in, he got the babyface fire, then he sold, then he made the comeback. He tagged Tommy in once. Tommy came in and did a spot where he caught one of the lad's legs and then immediately tagged out. And I'm thinking, can you do nothing, mate? And then it turned out that uh, actually, yes, he cannot do anything (laughs) because there was a spot where Marty ran to the other side of the ring to hit a nice drop kick. And uh, Tommy Rogers, just in his own world, walked in front of him and, and blocked the kick like an absolute idiot. Didn't know what he was doing, where he was. It's just like Hawk at SummerSlam 92 where he's just wandering, he's plastered, so he's just wandering around the ring. It's kind of what it felt like. Taking up space on the hard camera. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy Rogers, wait, hang on, Dutch said no, no names. The first person who came out on this show was a guy I had never seen. <laughs> and then out of the first three people, I didn't know two of them. Do any moves occur? No, not really. They wait till the finish to actually work. Double Samoan headbutt. Double dog. Party Barty splashes to the outside. Samu hits a TKO and gets the three. Holy shit. Oh, wow. You just cover the match in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Takes him down. Face Buster. One, one two, three. It's they got over. Him. The Samoans I was right. I was right. I knew I was right for this job. Favorite part of the match? Uh, My favourite part of the match was when Randy Rosenblum uh, botched some of his calls. He called a arm drag, a reverse slam takedown. Okay. And then he called a drop kick, a flying leg kick. (laughs) Which it is. What else would you kick with? (laughs) That's not going to be an arm kick. (laughs) And obviously Dutch just got pissed off here because he, he took him to task on live pay-per-view on it and I thought it was mm, a bit I, cunty uh, you're wondering why is he so pissed it's because Dirty Dutch actually spent the prior day teaching him all the names of the moves Okay, and he just no no. and Rosenblum when he did an interview about it was saying eh, well, you know it doesn't need to be exactly wrestling is a no holds barred you know lacy fair affair you know what I mean 
So I'll call it whatever I want. Tough shit. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Luke? Great to see Marty as always in great shape, coherent. You know, he was compass mentis, but he's definitely didn't give a shit. But he was able to work, which is nice. Other than that, it's a shame to see Samu. You know, like maybe Samu was seeing Rikishi in WWE getting fatter, getting more popular. Shamu. <laughs> And you have nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Man, yeah, I, I love, yeah, really popped the crowd, the heels going over, you know. Um, how long did these lads prepare for this match? For realsies, 30 seconds before they went out. You just call him the ring, brother. This is what you get. This is what you, you get. get. The Brian Alvarez of matches. <laughs> the cheek of him. He was like banging on about having a match for 10 years. And then when he go, and he was like, I'll show you, I'll show you, mm. put the match together. And then when he comes out, let's call it in the ring. Clap. Walk and a clap. Yeah, come on. This is an Alvarez. Yeah, match. yeah, yeah. Alvarez, yeah. Who was he wrestling? Pistol Pez Watley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, when was this? 2016. Well, or was it okay. singles or tag? Singles, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. singles. Okay, okay. The cheek of him. <laughs> Call it in the ring. <laughs> I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta see if you can find footage of this. I, 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 I it's burning his slow clap. <laughs> That's not a move. Earlier today, we see George Steele and Sherry canoodling on their way to their hotel room. Ooh, Sherry has the sunny roll bursting open her dress in a vignette. It was mismatched underwear, by the way. Come on. Yeah. And saying, I get what I want, as opposed to what Sonny gets, Sonny wants. What Sonny wants, Sonny gets. Um, oh, I get what I want. <laughs> I want what I get. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, and Sherry's saying, I get what I want, as opposed to what Sonny gets, Sonny wants. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, Sorry. Uh, and says, I, I, I want what I get. <laughs> I want what I get. <laughs> Oh Sorry. Uh, I'm saying I get what I want as opposed to. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it. Can we just leave this whole yeah. segment in, please? <laughs> this is fucking magic. Uh, the gimmick being their relationship is more than just managerial. Match number two a beauty and the beast grudge match. <laughs> <laughs> he is the most beautiful wrestler <laughs> to ever step foot in the ring, like. Uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, 48, versus George the Animal Steel, 62. 48! <laughs> How is he so young? <laughs> And waddles out. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, sensuous Sherry. Uh, she was sensuous in WCW since Vince copyrighted Sensational. Greg cuts a promo. His cadence messed me up because he's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the son of Ju- <laughs> I'm the son of Jimmy Valentine and George Young Steel. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, I couldn't get that on it. Uh, ding, ding, ding! Immediate time wasting. Valentine bails. The- <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding! <laughs> immediate time wasting. Shall I eat the turnbuckle? Uh, let's pull the field shirt over his head. I uh, kick the boot. Uh, and Sherry starts attacking. George. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he, there's a swerve at the start of the match <laughs> when it's least effective. I don't know if this is better or worse than the show. <laughs> oh my god! <coughs> <laughs> Steel hits Valentine in the throat with a a, a, a shave. A, it looked like um, a shoe. No, horn. it looked like a bit of ginger. <laughs> 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 Wrap, wrapped in tape uh, and Sherry hides it and it's like what the two lads just start using this tape ginger <laughs> in front of the ref and he doesn't care uh, so Sherry hits animal with a chair and one two three that's it <laughs> tough shit <laughs> tough shit we already have your money <laughs> uh, George chases uh, them away and gets his heat back on the 
turnbuckle pad. <laughs> Oak, what do you think, mate? Uh, I, it was... So sorry about this no, no, it was... Uh, it was... That I enjoyed this. <laughs> uh, it, like, it's what it was, but... <sighs> What I struggled with most, we have this storyline with George Steele and Sherry. There's no beginning or end to it. There's just this middle and we're landed in the middle of it and then pulled back out. I'll have you know that there was 15 years of build to this spot, (laughs) Steve. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, hilarious. Brilliant. I'm the son of the legend Johnny Valentine and George the Animal Steele. Match number three, a special grudge match. It's Too Cold Scorpio, 33, versus cocky youngster Julio Fantastico, 27. Announcer Michael St. John with Julio, later known as Julio De Niro in ECW and briefly in TNA. Let me tell you something, brother. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I have them written down. After six words, he was dead. <laughs> yeah. He's going to beat your tail. Let me tell you something. You have no clue that you are in the presence of greatness as we speak. I did like, I'm the reason you're here. I'm the reason you cheer. That's pretty good. Yeah. Charles Skaggs, Too Cold Scorpio here. He was gone from ECW at this point. His last match was versus RVD at CyberSlam 99 in April. This is before his kind of career resurgence in Noah in the 2000s. Charles Skaggs comes out yeah. with the fucking <laughs> big goldie. WCW world title belt. Ric Flair's belt. This is like 92 all over again, isn't it? This We've got the WCW world champion on this show. On Heroes of Wrestling. It's crazy shit, lads. They should have pixelated it out. Yeah, like this. <laughs> lawsuits <laughs> flying. Like. <laughs> Where did he get this? <laughs> well, he, he went to highspots.com. <laughs> highspots.com. <laughs> Is he looking to flog it off? Like, <laughs> who's got 200 quid? Man? I'd love to know the thinking behind this belt. You can't bring that out. It makes you look like a fan. Yes, it yeah. does. doesn't it? <laughs> There's Captain Lou Albano joining us. Okay, okay Randy. He's Captain Lou. Yeah, he's dressed in a flowery, light blue, dark blue shirt with dollops of purple. What bar is Captain Lou? He is a boy special silver washing powder. <laughs> nice yeah, very good boy. boy boy special very nice yeah look at the talent they have here tonight this is one of the greatest of all time one of the greatest events of all time bill stone jr you're out doing yourself i can't believe it the heroes of wrestling baby captain lou guest commentates putting over this pay-per-view as one of the greatest of all time he roman reigns bill stone productions bill stone productions greatest production of all time what a carny shill. Like. What a fucking credibility killing <laughs> couple of minutes as well, lads. He's definitely something from a very far gone era. Like he doesn't fit in in 1999 at all. He's a total territory carny. Totally. What did you think of the Duffman song that the lads came out with? <laughs> Whoa. Dave Bow Bow. Fucking brilliant. So when you come out on a pay per view, you best put your best effort forward. Uh, you know, it can really knock you down. It can really hurt you later on in the future. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not tonight. Not tonight! Are you ready to get duffed? Kick off with the Owen Hart wrist lock escape spot. Not quite. Scorpio leads Julio through some pre-rehearsed spots. Okay? Okay? Ah! Julio freezes and Scorpio headlock, stop and drop kick. Julio's like, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of the big dive? No, skin the cat, run and Pascano. Interesting. Was that a botch or was that a legit move? My thinking watching it was that he was going for the flip dive, like you know that move that Edge broke your man's neck with on Raw? Oh, Jose Estrada, yeah. Yeah, but maybe he was out of place and he kind of saved it by holding onto the ropes and like pulling himself back over, but the entire spot just looked bad. It looked indie-rific. Brawl into the crowd? Uh, the camera can't follow you, so give up and get back here. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> they lost them for like 10, 15 <laughs> seconds. And the commentators are like, oh, we can't see them. I don't know what to do. Stand up in your chair or something, lads. <laughs> they keep calling Tico Scorpio the dragon. 
Dragon? Dragon, yeah. no. Uh, spinning kick, big slam, Brett's rope tumbleweed, follows up with a phoenix splash, leg drop, misses by a mile. Miles. And <laughs> gets the victory. Oh, the party's Off the over. top rope. Oh, oh, oh. Party's over. It's all over. That's it. One, One two, two, three. The tumbleweed oh, finished up. Oh, yeah. I don't know. He tried. This was their big break, him and uh, Tommy Rogers. This is the biggest break they could ever hope to receive. And it turned out? 29,000 people uh, watching this at home or whatever it was. Multiply yeah. that by three or four. And they shot the bed. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the peak of the show. I mean, there's no way th- that you could say that this wasn't the best match on the card. Scorpio was fine. Julio was like really green. He kind of messed up a few spots. But my takeaway of this match was Captain Lou. I thought he was the worst part of the entire show. I thought he was horrifically bad and he made me angry. And he just got made commissioner. And, oh yeah. my God. And then he's talking about that afterwards. And Randy Rosenblum wanted to ask him something. And he literally just goes, shh. And then says a spiel. And I was like, oh, you're a big dirty knacker cunt. Like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, it wasn't terrible. Tuco Scorpio, great wrestler. You know, yeah, it, yeah. he didn't have an amazing night, but in general, he's a great worker. I, lo- I love watching him wrestle. It's also nice um, that we didn't have to look at his big giant flute for half of the match. Like, <laughs> we, yeah, do you remember, was it Hardcore Homecoming where he wore the like yellow gear and just like... We're not splicing this. <laughs> Mickey flopping around in the wind. Like. <laughs> I love the finish. I, like, I love his finisher horrendous botch and they showed the replay of it lads come on like and and Julio sold it like Neymar like Jesus vantagem brasileira pode dar vantagem seu juiz dá vantagem que o Neymar pegaram ele no caminho e agora seu juiz King Kong Bundy in here right now because there's a lot of one I don't know what made him choose that drunken old sod Albano to be commissioner. King Kong Bundy with a fat, sweaty, shouty, bald man promo. <laughs> That's pretty much been every promo on this show so far, though, hasn't it? Poor Kazuna, gonna hit the move, I'm gonna beat you because I'm the best big man. I'm the fattest man. <laughs> <laughs> this is clearly a lie, sir. <laughs> Tag team grudge match. It's the Bushnackers. Combined 104 years. <laughs> oh my god. Versus Nikolai Volkov and Shiki Baby. Combined 108 years. Oh man. 212 years. In Hold ring. on. Are you saying that the combined age of Shiki and Volkov is only like four years more? Yeah. Than the bu- no. Yeah. 40 years more than <laughs> Yana might believe you. <laughs> wow. They look so much worse. Yeah. It's the immobility, I think. Yeah. And then they're bigging up the heels as former WWF tag champions. Yeah, they won them at WrestleMania 1. You can see them here. Here's Sheik posing for a picture that no one's taking. <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, would you not say former WWF world champion instead? You know, it's mm. a much bigger accolade. USA, Hawk Paul. And I was like, hey, if Sheik did that today, would he be babyface or heel? Ooh, <laughs> you know it'd I mean? be like Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. Either way, you can be sure that singing the Russian national anthem gets heat. And he has that right of the Hulk Hogan or Bob Buckley. Not the bushwhackers, not the sheep herders, but the men down under out next. Rosenblum mistakenly calls them Luke and Dutch, and Mantel chews him out. You said Luke and Dutch. Don't ever, ever put me in the category with these guys here. Never, 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 never. That's a real oh, bad thing. That's a bad that. no-no. I know you didn't. Bushnackers licking the face off fans. Not children, they're grown men. It's not like they walked by them and grabbed them and did it. Like the lads were lobbing the face at them. Like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I contend one of you, I don't think both, but one of you would accept a lick. No, no. Uh, I don't no, know. No, no, the no, heat no. of the moment. Heat of the, the moment. moment. No, get your face away from me, sir. <laughs> I, Steve. You're ca- dirty I don't, carny. I, smelly carny. I, I don't think I could. No. You know, Mickey James wants to come over and uh, dance, yeah. you know. For sure. folks. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, lads, Luke's hair. Didn't have any. Luke had some horseshoe hair. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember in Robocop? 
yeah. Oh, yeah. When he takes, takes off, off the mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the baby food. <laughs> he, he looks like Murphy. <laughs> oh, jeez. Unbelievably, the New Zealanders rally the crowd to chant USA. Oh, yeah. USA. And uh, they use this as an excuse for Shiki Bay just to waste time saying, oh, I'm not going to wrestle if you keep chanting USA. Oh. How does Luke sell a kick to the belly welly? So kick to the belly welly. Back bump. You like that? Mm. At least he took a bump. Bump is very generous. He gently settled to the canvas. <laughs> yeah. He should have just twirled off screen. Yeah. <laughs> Dainty kick by Sheik. Oh, I'm bollocks. That's me done. So he leaves the ring. Volkov with the world's softest backbreaker than pin. He's like, eh. it was <laughs> so bad. Randy says, oh, Volkov there with a soft slam. Giant red granny panties Volkov grabs a foreign object, or as they call it, an object, uh, but hits Cheeky instead. Men down under, bum rush and capitalize, getting the victory. There is a foreign object. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That took down his partner from the Iron Curtain. One, two, three, it's over. Bushwhackers. Oh my goodness. Dirty Dutch calls them Australians. New Zealanders, <laughs> as we see Luke giving a fan a nasty boy's pit stop. Uh, Just, uh, uh, there's no need for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leave it out. <laughs> Leave it out. <laughs> I'd, I'd rather that though than the lick. Man, you know, between that and Rikishi putting his hole in your face yeah. and Pity City. Pick one. <sighs> Pick one or it's all three. <laughs> <laughs> Stink face. Really? Because at least you can turn your face with, <laughs> because his arse is so big yeah, yeah, yeah. that your face is going to get lost to the camera <laughs> anyway. I'm going to take Pity City because... It's we, post-match. Yeah, see, there wouldn't be as much bodily fluid as then a lick. Like, lick, you're definitely mm. getting oh, yeah. fluids, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And with the stink face, there's, like, a lot of photographic evidence there. What if he's wearing his uh, muffler like Dusty used to wear? <laughs> Did you take it then? See, the problem is he does the stink face and then comes out and my glasses are missing. No. Brezhnikov trying to get him. Oh, well, uh, the Russian bear hug here is a makeup. It's the Midnight Express versus Horseman Grudge Match. Sweet Stan Lane, 46, versus Tully Blanchard, 45. What's the build here? Sweetness Pearl Harbor's Tully in front of us, his rental car. Uh, and, oh, wow, wow, we get the highlight of the show. Oh, yeah, we get a Tully promo. Mm. Ten years is bubbled up inside me. Ten years all of a sudden, at one time, is bubbled up inside me. And everybody that's ever screwed me, anybody that's ever done me wrong, is all coming out. Ten years, ten years of anger boiling up. It's all coming to the front. That was fucking great, mate. The best part of the show by a fucking mile. That's such a shame. Like a three-minute promo. Best part of the show. It's such a wasted promo, though. You know, For the show? Yeah, like, you're, ah, Tully, man. You could have used that, I don't know, Japan used it there. You yeah. could have come back and did some kind of match, like, against Iron yeah. or, or Flair yeah. and cut this horseman breaking up and he felt that he was the best and Flair kept going. Like... If this was used for a different match, it could have been, like, a legendary promo. But on this, it's merely the best thing on the worst show of all time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tully's gonna take out the bubbling frustrations from his career. Anyone that's done him wrong, his feuds with Dusty, he's gonna get all of it. He mentioned being screwed by Jim Hurd specifically, as back in 1989, days before the Survivor Series, Tully failed a drugs test. Uh, he was supposed to go to the NWA, but they pulled their offer. And so only Arn came in and it pretty much killed Tully's career. Ouch. It was mentioned at the end of our OSW 14 SummerSlam 89 review. And it's the birth of Smellness. Mm. Ah, he, Smellness. He failed a wellness test due to... Yeah. Smellness. Smellness. Worth noting, the Midnight Express, Robbie Eaton and Stan Lane did beat Horseman, Arn and Tully for the tag titles September 10th, 1988 on their way out before joining the WWF as the Brain Busters. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am the original gangster of love. I tip the scales at 228 and three quarter pounds. I am Sweet 
Japan. Uh, Pretty good. Excellent. In ring, Sweet Stan Lane mentions he was simultaneous NWA and WCW tag champions and also worked for the WWF as an announcer. It's like, hmm, okay, you're bringing that up. He's like, he does such a good job as an announcer. Like, you might talk yourself out of being a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> good quip, though. You're preaching intense and I'm on ESPN. Yeah, all of this, all of this was good. Yeah, I agree. I uh, neglected to mention he was covering motorboat racing. <laughs> 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 I love that they put over Stan Lane being a ladies man. He is a notorious boon hound. And so they cut to all the reactions of the women in the, the crowd. Non, you, what reactions? The non-reactions. Oh my God. They looked actively grossed out and bored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like they were taking the piss with these uh, cutaways. Yeah. Know. Literally nothing happens. Bit of kick. Bit of punch. Bit of pull you to the outside. Bit of stumble around. <laughs> there is a Tully figure four on the outside. He also reverses a pile driver with a back body drop. Belly to back suplex by Lane and Ref Todd Taylor counts one, two, three. This has been a war between Stan Lane and oh, Tully Blanchard. Side suplex. Wait a minute. One, two, two three. Wait a minute. But what happened? <laughs> Because Tully is shown to be the winner. Uh, the confusion ensures the crowd is never roused from their slumber. Yeah, this <laughs> man, whoo, this match was about seven minutes long, and I don't think they ever really got into even first gear. They kind of kick punched a bit of walk and brawl, and then went to the ring and did their finish. A horrible finish, and uh, not that the crowd could be killed, but you know, it, <laughs> <laughs> they're already dead. <laughs> but it didn't wake them up. Yeah, I don't, like they showed a replay and both men have their shoulders up. Mm-hmm. Eh, anyway, we're not coming back to this match. <laughs> You're not restarting. Uh, what do you think? Ike? It was a perfectly decent 80s house show match. and It was on pay-per-view. It cost <laughs> 20 quid. <Yeah. laughs> there, you know, they were both decent. But yeah, for the build-up, they, they have actually put effort into this build-up. Well, as much as uh, Heroes Wrestling could, there was no payoff. And... This wasn't the only match on the card where I was like, hold on, who won? Who won? It was so subdued. It was almost glossed over if there was anyone got a three count. It was just, no, no. just We're, we're done now. Yeah, out you go. Quietly, please leave. So, yeah, it, it weird, weird. Uh, the wrong way to end it, definitely. I was, yeah, it was really sad because like, Tully had a great promo and then Stan Lane had a great in-ring promo. It's was like, oh shit. And then it's like, oh, <laughs> with the nothing yeah it's so bad it's like this is what wrestling could be <laughs> you know I'm glad it's not <laughs> ah the one man gang have taken you out once and for all <laughs> match number six a no mercy grudge match <laughs> fuck off Abdullah the Botcher 58 <laughs> versus oh my god 39 from Chicago. What? <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. So, yeah, when he was like the terrors, he was in his 20s. Holy <sighs> shit. Wow. I love the announcer. From Chicago, Illinois. I <laughs> it is nice. Butcher's manager is Honest John Cheatham. Looks a bit like uh, Rich Evans when he plays Mr. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, very good. It's the match of old fat men. <laughs> 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 this is 1999's version of Haystacks versus Big Daddy. Pearl Harbor from the front to kick off. Uh, just uh, on the back of Oh My God here, he's written Join the Chain Gang. I thought he immediately fulfills his gimmick, punching and choking Abdullah with the chain. I say choking. Gang is like the lightest, softest worker. It's like, I'll daintily place the chain around your shoulders. He gently pushes Butcher into the ring post <laughs> and grazes him with his boot. And then... fucking comes out with a gusher lads (laughs) Abdullah wins carnality (laughs) Uh, he's gross Uh, he's immediately busted open which is fair bleeding heavily is literally the only thing people know about (laughs) maybe the WCW Chamber of Horrors match at Halloween Havoc 91 where he sells an electric chair like that one you know yeah fuck him though Turned out he was positive for Hepsi, 
and he was sued by uh, Devin Hannibal Nicholson. They wrestled together in 2007. That's how he got it. And in 2013, your man Devin had uh, WWE physical when he was offered a three-year contract. WWE found out, oh, hey, you've Pepsi. Killed his career. That's it. <sighs> Fuck. A couple of other wrestlers said, yeah, yeah, he's a scumbag. Who knew about it? Jesus. Yeah, like uh, Superstar Billy Graham and um, Rocky Johnson and that, you know. Uh, but Abdullah, for years then. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And, but he was still wrestling eight years after this paper. Yeah. Then. yeah. And he knew he had it. Uh, and I'm going to blade anyway, tough shit. Ah, for fuck's sake. Bleeding profusely, Abdullah blocks a corner attack and starts working with a fork. One man gang hastily blades too. Ah, fuck. Honest John dips in on commentary. Both fat lads work towards the announce table. Oh man, bleeding over Rosenblum's notes. And I freaked him out. And that's what tips it over the edge for the ref, ringing for a double DQ. No contest! After seven and a half minutes, and they Jim Duggan brawl to the back. Okay, we need to stop this. We're, all, we're in some danger over here. Woo! What do you think? I'm telling you now. A lot of people would have enjoyed this in 99. Yes, it's I agree. ECW, near enough its peak. It's just garbage. Blood for the sake of blood. You've got a fork and you're just jabbing them with the fork. There's no kind of art to it. You know, like you see, you can see hardcore matches. Uh, uh, um, Steve, I have it written here. Yeah. Fork shot. Chair shot. Fork shot. <laughs> chair shot. Fork shot. This is art. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But at the time, late 90s, people would have been salivating over this shit. But I'm happy that one man gang looks better than he's ever looked. That's my only positive That's your take to take from this match. <laughs> yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pure Face on you. dog shit wrestling. <laughs> I believe that there's a place for this type of stuff in wrestling, but there's not a place for this stuff in my wrestling. Two big horrible fat knackers <laughs> <laughs> waddling about smacking each other with shit <laughs> and bleeding the end <laughs> yeah they were still going at it and you kids watching this if you watch watch Abdul the Butcher and One Man Gang this is exactly the type of wrestling that was that made heroes out of these guys here and that's one reason they're here here tonight fighting Without using an instruction book, King Kong Bundy has learned to use the new fully IBM compatible Head Start computer in only 23 minutes. Head Start by Bendix. It will bring out the genius in you. This is the man of the hour, the man of the power. I'm Captain Lou and I'm telling to you, look out! And we're back. Match number seven is an ultimate grudge match. Cowboy Bob Orton versus Jimmy Superfly. Superfly Snooker. Not much from Superfly Snooker. Bird's eye vignette where Cowboy Bob tries cheating at cards. And then he's like, how dare you? I'll slap you. <laughs> Pretty good. They should have known better. He's ace, Cowboy Bob Orton. Yeah, it's good. And that's the build. I, I love how Dutch, before this match, he's prepping us for Bob. How Orton expends as little energy as possible to get the most out of it. It's like, you know, audience at home, don't expect anything here. The bar <laughs> couldn't be lower. <laughs> it's a great family fucking trait, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's exactly what Randy Orton did and slow the match down. Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Snooker's 66 years old here. Oh, in great shape. He's 66. 66? Yeah, yeah. Wow, he looks younger than uh, Wolfman Valentine. Gang was 39, yeah. Valentine 48. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. He's got the pot belly. Yeah. But they all have the pot belly. Yeah. He had the smallest pot of all. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, a, like a dish pan. <laughs> a little saucepan. Like yeah. the one you'd cook an egg in. Exactly. Yeah, yeah there yeah, you go. Yeah. 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 Spoke too soon. Clothesline over the top? No, I'm not taking that. No. <laughs> Just flubs to the ground. <laughs> Wait a minute, oh. elbow right to the forehead of the Superfly. Nostalgia is in. Cut to a fan literally wiping his eyes to stay awake. <laughs> 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 Delayed vertical suplex and a gun show by Borton. Oh, I fucking love it. Yeah. Dirty Dutch with another pearl of wisdom. These guys aren't in their 20s. Not even in their 30s. These older men... It hurts more. 
What was my point? <laughs> <laughs> Just buried the card. <laughs> By the way, Cowboy Bob's 48, Snooker 66, a combined 114 years in the ring. Okay, let's, let's face it, Randy, these guys are older. How long was that rest hold? <sighs> and it garners an unrepeatable chant. Wow. Jesus Christ! Uh, let's take it home. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Lou holds Superfly's leg to prevent a superplex, distracting Ace, allowing Snooker to Superfly cross body splash for the win in 11 minutes 45. His hand on the turnbuckle. Superfly leap. One, two. He got him with it. The Superfly leap and a pin for Snooker. Shockingly, lads, one of the better matches of the night. <laughs> Um, like that rundown was the entire thing. You know? <laughs> I skipped no move. <laughs> I will say that my favourite part of the match, Snuka hits a headbutt and Orton does some kind of like floppy sell to the ropes. I thought that was nice. That's my lone highlight of the match. Floppy sell. Yeah, the old floppy sell. I think it's quite damning of the quality of wrestling on the show that I would consider this as maybe in the top three matches. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't this match like the longest match on the fucking card as well? Mm. It was like 11, 11 minutes or something? Oh, what? Yeah. yeah. 11.45, yeah. And they did nothing for the first 10.45. <laughs> <laughs> it was all. It was like, oh, I'm going to hold this arm hold. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I'm going to do like a kick. And then it's right back to the arm again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, to be fair, like they tried to work. It started well, went downhill quickly. Bob Orton Sr. would be most famous to younger fans, helping out his son Randy during his WrestleMania 21 feud with The Undertaker. <sighs> with the awesome back to back father son, hey! Pose. Mirror um, spots. Mm. Coffin spots. Oh, uh, I'm so big into it. Yeah. Taker taking over Josh Matthews and speaking through him. <sighs> And talk shit to them. It was great. It was, it was a great feud. <laughs> yeah. Bob Orton is actually really good. Asterix turns out to be a cunt who also had hep C. Yeah, I heard about this. <laughs> yeah, and he, you know, bleeding everywhere. And so Taker battered him backstage. Good. Yeah. yeah. Good. Absolutely. Two matches left. One match left. It's time for your main event. <laughs> Matt Snooker got away clean there, didn't he? Not not in court, but... Let me tell you something, Anvil. You don't want to play cards with me because I'll cheat, okay? I cheat. You want to play 21? I got 22. You want to play blackjack? I got two of those too. You want to play aces and eights? Maybe I got too many of those too. It's not supposed to be, but it's your main event. (laughs) It's a historic Jake promo. You know when you're ballooned off your tits like uh you start kind of loving the feel of your own hair and like he's on camera and he just starts <laughs> <laughs> the feel of his face you know I am the lizard king but <laughs> <laughs> in the casino you should gamble you don't want to play cards with me because I'll cheat okay I cheat you want to play 21 I got 22 you want to play blackjack? I got two of those too. <laughs> What's that even mean? <laughs> blackjack is 21. <laughs> <laughs> you want to play aces and eights? I'm oh, sorry. This is a, this is my favorite. You want to play aces and eights? Well, I got some of those too. <laughs> <laughs> Bottom line is this. You do not gamble with me. Mr. Cameraman, get your ass back up here. <laughs> <laughs> he was on to something though. Yeah, you know, like you said, when he wasn't off his tits, it was a clever, was a promo. yeah, like, and like, I'm glad this happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, oh, what a shame, what a shame. Holy shit. Spare a thought for the interviewer. Awesome professional job. Well done, sir. 
obviously Jake is ballooned off his tits. You know, he can't walk straight. And you can get away with that walking down a ramp if you've got a massive snake in a bag on over your shoulder. But you put that into the ring. And then when you go back up the ramp, he can't walk straight. He might fall off. He, <laughs> and so he disappears. What's going on? He comes out and he jobber jogs to the <laughs> ring <laughs> to get back to his original <laughs> position. <laughs> oh, in his sweatpants <laughs> and snakeskin boots that he wasn't even in good enough shape to tie up, lads. Yeah. Oh, they were fuck. just open and floppy. Yeah. And then there's the historic. Oh, my God. So he's walking around the ring. He's like clapping hands, looking at fans. Very generous. Spots this lady. And then he stops in his tracks. It's like one of Heenan's, like, oinkettes or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they were called. Oh, That's brilliant. That's so mean. And so then he just grabs her by the wrists and he slowly drags her arms, puts them on his fucking titty balls <laughs> and gives them a good old squeezy squeezy. And I wish you could see this, guys. of glee. <laughs> In his face. Ecstasy, yeah. <laughs> Ecstasy. He's so pleased with himself. Lads, new challenge. Stink face, uh, lick by Butch or Luke, the old Pit City, or the rubbing Jake. Easy, this one. Oh, you're yeah. Go, you're going for this. Oh, yeah. Rubbing yeah. Jake. Oh, yeah. I'd huh? even motorboat him faster than take the <laughs> other <thing. laughs> Looking at Jake, I was thinking, like, wrestlers, like, they give you the smelly carny you see in the back and it's up to your production company promo packages and the way you present them to turn them into a superstar a lot more um respect for vince as well mm-hmm. like you can see what he does with kind of nothing yeah it's like with china just lovely person but can't cut a promo can't wrestle but like she's one of the most famous women's wrestlers in history she's one of the biggest wrestlers in history yeah you know around about the same quality wrestling as jake now <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you know, he wanted his retainer. We sent him his retainer and then he called us up and um, Jake told us straight up if we didn't get him some crack, then he wasn't going to come to our show. Probably synonymous with Jake is Beyond the Mat, his bit in it. Jake was in such bad shape that he wouldn't do an indie show unless there was an eight ball of coke waiting for him backstage. Obviously, Jake, he's completely out of it. No position to perform here. But like how Jake was acting, this is not the action of someone who's high on coke. This is a cocktail of whatever he could get his fucking hands on. Like, yep. mm. Incredible time-wasting, collar and elbow tie-ups, size-ups, arm ringers. Fuck it. Jake whips out a snake. <laughs> 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 the show, has, was it already a disaster? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, so what does that make this? This is a catastrophe? This is rock bottom, surely. Or the icing on the cake. If I was the promoter, I would have been thinking... It's just bad. Now it becomes more than bad. It becomes something special, something iconic. Legendarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. Producers scramble and send out Bundy. He has a quick word with Anvil, powwow about the situation. He distracts Jake. Uh, Here you can see their plan. And Neidhart Pearl Harbors him. Oddly, Anvil doesn't take him down and pin him and like, let's end the match. They must have other plans. What were they thinking? Like, there's so many ways of doing this without making your talent angry. Because when Bundy came out, he was fucking fuming. But, like, if you're backstage, like, why is your first thought, okay, we've got to kill our main event, the match that we built this entire show around? Surely you'd send word to the referee or the workers, okay, count out, double DQ, anvil, shoot, pin them. Just something like, let's end this <laughs> and then we can get on to the real main event and maybe try to finish the show on a high point but I personally think that the choices that they made was the worst possible choice because it literally kept Jake out there for like a further 12 minutes mm. Just that's, that's what they did for Victory Road 2011 when Jeff Hardy was smacked out of his yep. bin uh, I actually have that written yeah, here as well Sting just a Scorpion Death Drop fucking stayed out one two three that's it yeah. you know? which was the right choice not animal. Where's the former Yokozuna? Jesus, the size of Yoko. Oh, fucking hell. You'd wonder, you'd look at it, like, he puts on a few more pounds, he's not going to be able to walk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he can barely do anything. Like, Jake is a wreck, and they send Yoko out to save the day with Bundy. And even though he's your answer to this issue, he still doesn't get in the ring, because he physically can't. Mm. 
Count, Check Ralph, count. Count. One. Nope, not enough. Who is Baby Bundy? <laughs> 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 I was looking at him. I bet you you run the company. Oh, but, yeah. But no, no, he's the lad chatting to Anvil is Michael Henry, Booker Lombardi's right-hand guy. See, Bill Stone was like, hey, I don't know about anything about wrestling. Psycho Sid, I got your number. Do you want to come and book and help me? And he was like, no, I don't want no part of this. <laughs> I'm busy. But here's Steve Lombardi's number. And so it was like him, Lombardi, and like two other people running the entire show. Yep. No one knows what's happening. Everyone's missing flights, you know, just production errors everywhere. I'm sure, Anvil actually missed four flights that day. And he showed up when he came out like 20 minutes towards the end. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oddly, they run out the clock by forcing Jake to work. The match is still going on, biting his forehead, which is your own hand, softly choking him and having a chat. Bundy short splash and quickie pin one, two, three, as if they didn't trust Jake not to kick out. <laughs> he got him in a, he got him in the short ribs again. A big splash, oh, that's five hundred pounds. One, two, three. Okay. So you're wondering why was Baby Bundy here? Uh, it was like guys. Jake, we got to do a spot, send the crowd home happy. Here, DDT me and I'll take the snake spot. And he's like, oh, go in, punch him. And it's just, he's just, no, 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 no. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, Yoko was there trying to hold him up. Get ready. Why don't you hit him, Jake? No. Okay. So I'll just Samoan drop him and that'll be that then. Which looked painful because yeah. he didn't go up well for it. Mm. That's a lot of mass crashing down on top of you. <sighs> If you're wondering why didn't Bundy or Anvil take the snake spot, they're saying, no, uh, I refuse. Anvil actually said, oh, WWF are calling me. And they said, don't job. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but he never, Bullshit. Yeah, Worker's going to work, baby. Yeah, yeah. But he never made it past like Memphis Developmental in 2000. So obviously not. Like, mm. Wow. I don't think you can count Raw 15th anniversary. <laughs> no. <you know? laughs> wow. Well, WWE were calling, don't job. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, nope. we're gonna push you to the moon, yeah. you know? Come on. Uh, so now Rock <laughs> Clanville. <laughs> you think you're special. You think you're special. special. You do. Oh we see, how does this uh, pay per view finish? Jake's there, he this is his time to shine. He takes Damo and holds him to his crotch as if he has an erect penis with a tongue on the end of it. Look. There's no way he did that for the first time at this pay-per-view because it's very controlled. He doesn't give it too much so it gets floppy. <laughs> but he doesn't... It's not small enough that it's small. Yeah. It's just the right size. <laughs> so, it was textbook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he nailed it. So you're saying that this is not the first time he did it. Yeah. You think this is the first time that he uh, wanked off the snake? <whistles> yeah. Well, uh, bit of that? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah mm. bit of that. Walked around the ring a bit quite controlled you know he didn't trip over anything which would have ruined the whole spot um oh yeah because like, you don't want to ruin this match you know <laughs> <laughs> i have to say what i liked best was the commentator sandbagging it you know there it was very it was very much like disappointment um there's a subdued tone in the in the arena at the time it was nobody was laughing nobody was enjoying it it was more kind of people it was like an outpouring of grief almost um <laughs> that's your main event <laughs> uh curtain down <laughs> <laughs> oh jesus Holy fuck Ooh, welcome to the aftermath mr ooc heroes of wrestling what do you think mate like how bad was it? it is it is that bad it's good when jake came out it crossed the line before that it was just a shit boring you know with a few highlights like the valentine stuff you know <laughs> great um but other than that it was just shit but it How then valentine i can highlight <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> But the show put itself over when Jay came out. It'll live forever because of that. And by the way, I just want to give a few props to Baby Bundy. I quite liked him. The commentators, yet again, sandbagged it. Who the fuck is this guy? Baby Bundy, Mini Me, Little Bundy. Like, which is quite funny. <laughs> but why, why can't you make him the next Vince McMahon? You know, the evil dictator of the company and... He could have been big. He could have been special. <laughs> could have been special. <laughs> you do. 
Is it the worst pay-per-view ever? Probably. Is it as bad as I thought it would be? No. I enjoyed, like, Stan Lane. You know I'm a big Stan Lane mark now, yes. after that <laughs> show we watched a few months ago. Unbelievably, you know. I thought he was actually very good. And it's funny, you know, we talk about Luke and Butch. Steve, you talking about it's like one of the worst matches you've ever seen, or at least we've ever covered. Oh, the four doinks, is it? Well, this match oh, here, this you've got the four doinks match, you got this match, and then I think Mike Guesh's match was was the Bushwhackers in that one as well. The Beverly's, I think. I think it one. was, wasn't it? Like that wasn't a horrific match. It was just Jameson. Oh, it was just Jameson. Way okay. heat, you know? But in terms of like the most hated moments of OSW, the Bushwhackers are generally involved. They are actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah geez, they're playing a stormer. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, at this rate. Hall of Fame? <laughs> oh, wait, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, better not be in our next hour. I swear <laughs> to God. So, overall, would I recommend the show? Damn right I'd recommend the show. Go and watch it now if you haven't. Yeah, what do you think? A shit show. A abysmal wrestling. Two and a half hours. That took me about four hours to make it through. And a half hour pre show. And a half hour pre show, yeah. Look shit. The audio issues. Wrestlers had no music coming out. There was one match where they have the same music. They came out to the same song. (laughs) I I was like, "You can do that with the Hardy Boys at Vengeance in 2001, (laughs) but you can't fucking do this here, you (laughs) pack of cunts." But this is an incredibly entertaining. It's famous. It's legendary. Every wrestling fan should go out of their way to to watch this. It's free. Just search it. You'll be able to watch it. Turn off your brain. Don't watch it as a modern day fan looking for faults to pick apart. Just go along for the ride and enjoy it. Zero out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> Still love it. Ten out. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, I completely agree, mate. Yeah, I, I know it was bad, but I still wasn't prepared. I wish it was released on DVD. Like, might I suggest a 4K Blu-ray Criterion <laughs> collection release? There's a market for old-school wrestling bollocks. Final word, Bill Stone. A year later, he was interviewed about it, chuckling. I don't think senior wrestling works. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah. Okay, it was hilarious, but it, it's also really sad to see the lowest point in Jake's career. Word is, the day of the show, he found out his ex knew he'd be getting a big payday from this and would sue him for about five grand and back child support. Good! Um, he'd previously been wanting to put on a good show, like it may be my last chance to get a run, but after hearing that, he disappeared and came back ballooned off his tits. Despite all that, I am so happy to see that Jake endured persevered and with the help of DDP still going even making his way into AEW in 2019 delighted for delighted for hilariously his first appearance was at Road to All Out episode 4 uh, he was at a blackjack table dealing cards nice <laughs> nice and literally said wanna play 21 you wanna play 21 <clears throat> well I got 22 nice Ah, oh, get in just a quickie, I want to uh, throw out a watch The Resurrection of Jake Roberts. Ooh. Um, it's about 100 minutes by Steve Yu. My main takeaway is that the wrestling world owes a debt to DDP. He saved Jake Roberts' life and he saved Scott Hall's life. He, he gave them hope. You know, he set them on the path to still be alive. Mm-hmm. It, it, and by giving them hope, it kind of gave hope to other people you know what i mean like if you fall on rock bottom there's options and there's help out there Mm. i think ddp is a great man i think he's a hero for doing what he does and he's not the type of guy who's on social media bragging about it putting himself over he does it for the sake of doing it because it's the right thing to do i think he's an awesome human being yeah 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 I have to mention, I'm impressed and saddened at the amount of times Jake Roberts falls down. Like, there's a couple of Heroes of Wrestling moments in the documentary. He goes into DDP's gaff. It becomes the accountability crib, so he lives with DDP and he's straight. And a week later, he was at an airport and he rings him up and he's sloshed. And it's like, oh, jeez, he's falling off the wagon. You just see him kind of shouting with DDP, saying, I'm not drunk, I'm not drunk. And it's like, you don't, he lost his shoes going around in the socks you know and then it's like cut to an indie show on the mic it's like you know give me the fucking thing i deserve uh, give me because they're going fuck you jake because he's off his tits and it's like he's surrounded by 23 miniature bottles of booze he could barely get in the ring and like this is during the main event and your man is like uh he just got him wrestle him down pin one two three got out of the ring 
just like Baby Bundy was like, do a move on me, send the crowd home happy. Just do a move, do, do kick me DDT. And so your man is just eh, clubbing him. Come on, man. Eh, do me. And he's just like, fuck off. <laughs> And that's how the, it ends. And that was the promoter. And he was like, yeah, I, you know, it's very sad to see him like this, but he also fucks over a lot of people. So, my, you know, my empathy is limited for him. Like, so he falls, but it, man, John Cena's creed of never give up, that is Jake Roberts. Like, he falls a lot of times, but he'll try his best to get back up. You know, so he starts a 300-pound drug addict. And 18 months later, he ends up a 245-pound Hall of Famer. You know, so it's incredible this snapshot in time where he goes into the Cauliflower Alley Club's Hall of Fame. He gets the call up to go to uh, old school Raw, where he gets a snake and pours it on Dean Ambrose. Everyone marks out, and then he goes into the Hall of Fame. You know, so it's like it's it's. I'm so happy they documented that era because like this is the best time of his life since he was in the late 80s, early 90s. You know, as a proper Jake the Snake. So anyway, it's fantastic watch. It's really life affirming, uh, heartwarming. Yeah, give it a watch. Mm. In a sad world of sad endings, it's kind of nice to hear something positive. You know, mm. Mm. Uh, it's on Amazon and YouTube and Google Play. I think. Oh, how, how yeah. new is it? 2015. I think I've watched it, mm. but I'll check it out. Fantastic. To allow me that, that panoramic, full view, it's you, Jake, moment. Okay, let's uh, go to the wrestling is. Awesome segment. Oh, hey, to celebrate OSW 100, let's end it with a quickie message from someone. Ooh. You don't mind? Baby Bundy. <laughs> oh, man, this is a downgrade now. No. After you no. said Baby Bundy. <laughs> Wrestling is awesome. 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 Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart, and I got a very special shout out going out to a very special longtime fan of mine that's going out to Jay. And this is coming courtesy of your good buddy, Oscar. And Jay, I just want to thank you for being such a longtime fan of mine. Thanks for always being in my corner. Thanks for always cheering me on. Thanks for celebrating the new generation. And, you know, I, I, I remember those days really well. They were great times for me. And I think we uh, moved wrestling in a different direction during that time period. And I'm glad that you took note of that. Thanks for being a big fan of that era. Thanks for cheering me on for so many years. And just know, Jay, that you are the excellence of execution. Everything you do, and you prove it time in and time out. And just know that everybody loves you for being the great man that you are. Thanks for being a big fan of mine. Thanks for always being in my corner. And just know that you prove every single day that you are the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Keep on doing the great things you're doing. Just know that you make the world a better place. Stay safe, and God bless. Uh, uh. Should have said the very end And friends <laughs> <laughs> And two friends Yeah, <laughs> That was awesome That was brilliant Congratulations Jay Thank you Nice to hear you being told these nice things <laughs> The fumbling resentment <laughs> <being>. <laughs> I, I'm impressed that uh, Oscar from Men on a Mission there. That was nice of him. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking as well. Uh, no, that was, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, Oscar, thank you so much, mate. Uh, it's a bit mental. Yeah. You know, bit mental. Uh, that was cool. Though. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Really cool. And, and were they all Brett's words or was a little bit of Oscar in there at the end, you know, talking about making the world a better place, which you do, but I don't know if Brett knows that. Ah. So I think... I make the world worse in some aspects, but yeah. if it evens out, <laughs> a net positive, you know. <laughs> yeah. Scraping the bottom of the barrel. 100 episodes in. <laughs> It's your own fault for clicking at this point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you to Bren Hart. And that does it for OSW 100, folks. How do you think that went, mate? That was great fun. Absolutely loved that. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Good stuff. Excellent. I was just thinking, like, 100 episodes under our belts here. Like, is there any episode or video we've done that you'd want people to rewatch? Something that doesn't get enough love? Heatwave 98 and I know I've been banging on about that for eight <laughs> Since years we've done or seven years whatever yeah. and uh, Lex Express 
Oh, wow. This in general. I love the whole thing, obviously, but the Lex Express episode itself, when we talk about the documentary, whatever you want to call it. Oh, the bus. The bus. The bus. Footage. The bus. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's one of my favorite episodes and it doesn't get talked about a lot. I would say, is obviously, want to say uh, thanks to the fans. They've been with us for a long ass time. Oh, I, I want to say thanks to the fans. I want to say thanks to the fans. I said it first. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously. <laughs> Do you just want to say more? Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks plus one. Yes. <laughs> Infinity thanks. Yeah. One. Like, obviously, they've been with us for a long ass time. You know what I mean? Like, 10 years is a long time. I love uh, that we have OG fans. They've seen the show go from rock band Mike in a <laughs> popcorn rock bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of began at rock bottom, yeah, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. And we've slowly clawed our way out. <laughs> I didn't we're, know, man. First episode was the best. I we're yeah, like, yeah, we saw yeah, it was something about really it. good, really yeah, good. Yeah. Really. Like we're kind of reaching like C level now. <laughs> uh, but look, look, you know, obviously we're a wrestling podcast first and foremost. But if I was going to say like any shows to go and watch, um, I think there's lots of love to be had with our non wrestling shows. Multiple time episode of the years in there. Yeah, Samurai Cop. Samurai Cop, Samurai Cop 2. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want a Samurai Cop 2. It's terrible. <laughs> the Room, yeah. the, the Happening, Happening is, yeah. the, Watchmen. The, the Hobbit, Watchmen. Watchmen. Like, they're all way fucking fun. So I'd say if you only watch the wrestling episodes, you should definitely give them a try. Uh, I think there's loads of fun to be had. And don't worry, we break down every movie in terms of wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like the T-Rex gets a hot tag, <laughs> you know, cleans house <laughs> in, in Jurassic Park. Yeah. One of my absolute favourites from the last arc we done, and it's because it's a OSW oh, on holiday episode, is Marine 6. Oh, um, good. Chatting about Steve. it. Yeah. Yeah. One of your finest though. moments. Yeah. yeah, maybe the finest moment um, of my life. You've been... <laughs> <laughs> insulting your hero <laughs> <laughs> fuck you wife and children <laughs> yeah. no it was lightning in a bottle that day mm. one last thing a new story arc is upon us and it's time you've been waiting what about seven months at this stage to find out what this was a new story arc is upon us what will it be the grains of sand flow through the immortal hourglass. The mythological forces of destiny flow through these veins. Speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> Speak to me, Gary Strider. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a new story arc, a five part Ultimate Warrior in WCW series. We got okay, five parts for you. We got his debut on WCW Nitro, August 17th. War Games at Fall Brawl. Dip into Ultimate Warrior's only film. Holy fuck. 1993's Firepower. Tagging with Sting on Monday Nitro. And finishing with the infamous Halloween Havoc 98 versus Hulk Hogan. Flash paper and all. Ooh, what do you think? I can't fucking wait. The level of bollocks that we're going to be reviewing here, guys, is going to be astronomical. Mythological. Vain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dial up the red bat phone, call Jim Gordon, sign the bat signal because it's going to be bollocks. <laughs> yeah. Ultimate War in WCW coming up next. Seems as if no formal introduction is going to be necessary. So you can watch all 100 episodes on our website on OSWReview.com. And if you're feeling jaunty, spicy, tato-y, no, I'm not talk- talking about Dunstones. <laughs> Cadbury Dairy Milky, uh, can of Cokey, um, ooh, delicious, ooh, Subway, yeah, what do we have? Subway, Mighty, Mega Meaty, Mega Meaty, uh, Spice Boxes. Horse boxes. Yeah, snail boxes. <laughs> you can find this on NoggerU at noggeru.oswreview.com. So it's a goodbye from me once. Uh, take a boo, lads. And I was he. I do. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 Girls, <laughs>
It's going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going, it's, uh, I can't wait. It's going to be so amazing. Speak to me. Wah, yeah. Why, yeah, it sounds like Turned into my user. 